Hello, Falcon Paladin fans! This is another edition of Into the Void, here on Black Beneath the Ladder Edition, and it's going to be a match between Death Gear and Alchemy. And let's get right on into it. In the bottom left corner of the map, we have the Red Protoss player. His name is Alchemy. And in the top right side of the map, we have the other Protoss player, Sporting Blue. His name is Death Gear. Into the Void is my weekly examination of gold. Nope. Nope. Bronze and silver. League level gameplay sent to be at falconpaladin at gmail.com. With the subject of Into the Void, should be a pretty good time held by all here. Very much looking forward to seeing what these players are going to do here in the Bronze and or Silver Leagues. And, okay, let me just, again, make one thing very, very clear. These are not your Wings of Liberty Bronze Leaguers. They're not. These guys know some build orders for the most part. Sometimes you want to crush someone who has no idea what they're doing. In which case, we have a lot to learn. But for the most part, these guys know to go Gateway first here. Get a pylon out, pylon, Gateway. Kind of keep it close to home. Walling off doesn't do a whole lot versus other Protoss players. Although it did cast in the Gauntlet Global Open on Sunday, last Sunday, which is every Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern. Twitch.tv slash GauntletSC2 if you want to see live StarCraft cast by me. Parting was there. And the final was Parting versus, um, who was it? Was it Goblin? I think it was Goblin there. He is a European GM level player. And they both walled off. And it didn't really help a lot. It seemed like there was a lot of proxy stuff going on. And Stalkers and Immortals. And buildings are terrible against Stalkers and Immortals. So I don't know what they were trying to do exactly. The players who would get proxied really couldn't successfully hold it with a wall. So I don't know why they bothered. But anyway, regardless, we're seeing our Protoss players kind of keep stuff close to home. Easier to defend this way with things like shield batteries and things. Uh, Photon Overcharge is gone, in case you haven't been playing this for a while. Which seems entirely possible, but... Anyway, early expand here from Alchemy. Did he go one gate expand? By golly, he did. He went one gate expand like he's playing against a Terran or a Zerg player. You really want to get these double gates out first. With the Cyber Corp, maybe the Forge is a little bit weird in Death Gear. Uh, people usually get two gateways out and a cyber core and double gas and then go for double adept or, oh, a zealot, not a zealot, or double stalker. Sometimes a sentry. Sometimes a sentry early on, but not in this game. I don't think we're going to see that. But, okay, Death Care is working on plus one attack. If he just got a forge for cannons or something or didn't do anything with it at all, I'd feel bad. Because that is a horrible decision. But Death Care is getting plus one, which I will allow at this stage of the game. Immediate Stalker from Alchemy. He really needs another gateway. Real, real bad, because he's going to have two of something coming his way to kill him very, very soon, and having one is bad news bears. Oh! Scouting Probe gets taken on by the Zealot. Nicely done, Zealot. I didn't think you'd get a kill, but you did. But you did. Death Gear needs to be working on Warp Gate now. About 30 seconds ago, actually, now. On the other side, we do have Warp Gate about C, 40% complete by Alchemy, so both players making their own mistakes here. Wow, one gate robo with an expansion. Okay, now this is a major problem that Alchemy is making. He needs more production facilities right now. If he's going to have two bases fully saturated with probes, and so far probe construction has looked good for Alchemy, then you're going to want more gateways. You're going to want more robo facilities. You're going to want a Stargate or something. Hey, look, a Stargate. He's 1-1-1-ing one, one, it, essentially. I mean, yeah, gateway, cyber core, robo, Stargate. This is his own build. There's no way this is something that he picked up off of LOTV.SpawningTool.com. And a double Stargate opening from Death Gear. What is happening? This is why I love Into the Void. This is why I love this so much. And for those people who didn't click on PvP because you're like, it's the same thing every time. No. No, it's really not. Not in Into the Void. Nothing is the same thing every time in Into the Void. It just isn't. All right. So Adept, what are you going to do with these Stargates? Death Gear is expanding. That's nice. Throwing down a Nexus. Hitting a couple cannons at the top of his ramp has an adept and a couple zealots. But guess what's bad against stalkers? Adepts and a couple zealots. These stalkers push up before the cannons finish and they can break this. But they're playing defensively as well. I understand it is scary to move out in this level of StarCraft. But I don't think you have to be too afraid. It's going to be Double Oracle from Death Gear. It's going to be Phoenix from Alchemy. Also picking up a wonderful robotics facility, Immortal. Immortals are so good. So good in PvP. It seems like the player that has the most Immortals, or the earliest Immortals in PvP, is going to have a huge advantage that is almost impossible to overcome. So, let's see if this Immortal just crushes everything. Because, again, it's great against uh, buildings, it's great against Stalkers, it's great against other Immortals. This Observer is going to fly by this cannon and die. It doesn't take that many shots. There it is, three. So, scouted a cannon, which is fine. Are you making more Oracles? What else? I mean... 
But Double Stargate kind of commits you to something beyond just two oracles. Like, you pretty much have to go Phoenix at that point, uh, eventually getting up to Carrier. Seems like something you would want to do. But anyway, Immortal, one done. There's another one in production here. Spending money fairly well is Death Gear. Alchemy starting to float some minerals, about 750 oracles flying into this completely undefended mineral line. Oh, this hurts. Real, real bad. Oracle's gonna move in, though. Nope, don't waste energy trying to take down an assimilator. That's bad. All right, how many? There's a Phoenix. Good. Phoenix, good answer. Stalker, good answer, too. So chasing the Oracle's away, but they've got four and three kills each. Seven kills is actually not as many as I expected there to be, but one Oracle, one oracle should have gone over here and one here and then got them both from both sides. So they couldn't run in one direction and escape entirely, but that's okay. That's things that we can learn. We can learn through doing Additional gateways on the way from Death Gear. Pretty much done with the Stargates, which I'm not a big fan of. Uh, also getting plus one attack. Okay, if you're getting plus one air weapons, which Death Gear is, you really, really got to do something else. Void Rays it is. Okay. Void Rays. Now, Void Rays is not as good in PvP. Void Rays in general, actually not that great. Unless you're trying to stop some early aggression from Zerg, in which case it's actually pretty good. But uh, in this case, the problem with PvP Void Rays is that Stalkers are fantastic against them. Phoenix are actually not bad either. And they're not super great, but they don't take extra damage from Prismatic Alignment, which is a an effect that Voidras can get to increase damage to armored stuff. And these guys are not armored. But Stalker Anti-Air is kind of ridiculous and always has been, especially against the Void Rays, their bonus damage versus armored. And since Void Rays are armored, they take that extra hit. So I really am going to have to put... Uh, if I had to put a bet down on this game, I would give it to Alchemy right now. Here about the six and a half minute mark. Again, it's early yet. And nobody's really made a sincere attack against the opponent yet. Which means this could go on for quite a while without really seeing much of anything. But but I still feel like Alchemy is just making better decisions right now. Finally getting an Observer, getting a War Prism, which is not easy. And Alchemy's the first one to move out. Okay, I'm liking this a lot out of Alchemy. He's got four Immortals. His ground army is just going to crush everything that Death Gear has here. He needs to focus down the Oracles and the Void Rays with the Stalkers and the Phoenix. If he leaves those alive, the Immortals are in a lot of trouble, but there are enough Stalkers here, I think. It'll work out. I mean, that plus one attack and plus one shields is done too for Death Gear. All right, it's not horrible, I guess, and plus one air weapons. So a lot of plus ones over here where there, there are no upgrades at all for Alchemy. So here we go. I mean, all the Stalkers are going to die for uh, the Death Gear. It's just pretty, and look at this tiny too, wow. Kite, 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 cannons are getting some nice shots off here because the army of alchemy is prioritizing the army of death gear. Void rays actually focusing down the stalkers very, very nicely. They're not using their attacks well. The phoenix weren't even involved in that, and death gear manages to hold. Wow, flying around, gonna pick up some probes. This is a fairly high level concept too. Oh, except for the part where you lifted, all of you lifted. But that's not how that works. They did an oracle though for it. That was nice. Yeah, you need to lift and have somebody left over to attack is how this is going to have to be done. One of the Phoenixes dies, goes back in for more. I don't I don't think you can really kite. The range here is further on the Void Ray. Then you're attacked, Phoenix, and yeah, dead. All right, so Death Gear survives. Good job, Death Gear. I didn't realize, I mean, there are three cannons up here with a shield battery, with full energy healing this whole time. Plus, again, the Stalkers, like I said, the Stalkers needed to attack the Void Rays, did not do it. Void Rays were hugely instrumental there, two kills and four kills each. And the Mortals could have taken down the Cannons if they'd been able to, but they were not allowed. Not allowed. Also, there are a lot of Zealots, and Zealots versus an Immortal Sentry Army are actually not bad if the Zealots can get attacks off. So, Death Gear not doing too horribly here. Continuing to make Immortals, continuing to make Phoenix. Working on upgrades now, getting another Stargate, recognizing he's floating some minerals and some gas. This is all to me. 2,400 compared to 900 and 1,300 gas production for Death Gear. Did he not get... Okay, he has Warp Gate. He just hasn't upgraded his gateways to Warp Gates, which is another problem. You definitely want to upgrade these things to Warp Gates, even if you don't think you're going to need them necessarily. Holy overreaction of cannons. If you don't need them necessarily, at some point you're going to want to warp something in somewhere. And having Warp Gates is required for that. Additional Void Rays in production. Is that a Fleet Beacon for Alchemy? It is. Is he going to go Carrier? I bet he's going to go Carrier. I can feel it in my bones. Yeah, Stargate Fleet Beacon. Hmm. I mean, could get the upgrade for Phoenix, the Anion Pulse Crystal, but perhaps not. Perhaps not. Oh, look, these are Warp Gates now. That's good. 
And what I mentioned previously, there are, wow, four cannons back here protecting this mineral line for death gear. You just need the one, maybe the two, to cover that whole mineral line. I mean, this is a lot of minerals you could be spending somewhere else, and you're a little bit mineral starved. Yeah, third base up and running for Alchemy. Third base warping in for Death Gear. It's 34 to 56 Harvesters. Alchemy's production of workers has just been on point this game. Really knows what he's doing right now. Yeah, Phoenix, Phoenix, and an Iron Pulse Crystal. So he's getting a Pulse Crystal upgrade attack range by two. But is that enough? Okay, so Void Ray attack is a range of six. Phoenix attack is a range of five. Oh, they do outrange Void Rays with that upgrade. Huh. All right, Alchemy. Never thought about this before, but Alchemy has been thinking about it. So here we go. Zealots, Immortals. Do Zealots have charge? No. Did the defensive Zealots of Death Gear have charge? No. Nobody has that upgrade, although Alchemy is working on it. It is being researched right now. Okay, now would it be really good for this army, for the Red Army of Alchemy, is to take down the third base of Death Gear. He can do it. He has the firepower to do it, but he's going to leave it alone because he doesn't know it exists. At the 10-minute mark, you got to scout and know what bases your opponents have. At the very least, check this very easy to take third and make sure it hasn't been taken. It's easier than going up this ramp with these five cannons and a bunch of sentries for some reason. I don't know why there are sentries here. I guess Guardian Shield. A lot of Guardian Shield. Do you see this? Mineral field depleted. What was that sound? I don't know what that sound was. Dude, don't go up the ramp. Kill the third. Don't go up the ramp. Kill the third. Come on, Alchemy. He's, oh, he's almost scouting it. Almost. All right, here we go. Again, there's no anti-air. Where are the Phoenix? At least absorb shots. The Void Rays are just wrecking everything right now. Oh, Alchemy. Oh, Alchemy, you can't just run your army up that ramp. I guess they did kill a pylon on the left side, depowering three of those cannons and the shield battery, but... Again, the Phoenix sit it out. And there's a million cannons protecting... Again, this is a lot of cannons, but... It's enough to keep the Phoenix away, if that's what your goal is. All right, so good job. Good job, Bob. All right, so range is now seven on the Phoenix. Range of the Void Rays is six. So they can sit back and fire, kind of do some kiting action on the Void Rays. But, they, I mean, it's just they didn't do... Any, the first two battles, they've done literally nothing. Alchemy is expanding again. He is making some poor choices as to when to attack and what to make, but his macro is kind of really good right now. Surprisingly really good. All right, Phoenix trying to line up and get past the cannons at the natural mineral line, but guess what? There's cannons at the main mineral line too, dude. You're just going to get smashed by static defense here. Uh, yeah, all right. All right, so they recognize that. There's three of them. They accidentally do manage to scout this third base of death gear now. Look! Ah, one Phoenix is doing the lifting and killing. Excellent. Excellent job, Phoenix. Here you go. Getting a bunch of pro kills. Eight have gone down for each respective player thus far. When the heck did Alchemy... Oh, yes. Alchemy lost probes during the Oracle attack of, like, the seven-minute mark. That's when that was. All right. All right. We were remembering. Little Ms. Magimek. Running around. Are you, like... Searching, scanning, cleaning, harvesting. Looks like you're kind of blowing dust off of things. So yeah, fourth base by Alchemy. Underway, a warping of Zealots here from Alchemy. I just, you need, okay, Mass Stalker would be really good here. None of this stuff does great against Mass Stalker. The Void Rays especially. Um, Adepts, Sentries, Zealots, nope. None of those things are great against Mass Stalker. I know you're trying to get tricky, Alchemy, but... Man, Tempest. Why Tempest? Ooh, okay, so the reason you want to make Tempest, especially in the PvP, is if your opponent's going Carrier. If your opponent has Carrier, Tempests are good. They do attacks from very, very far away. They do bonus damage versus Colossal Flying stuff. But none of the stuff here is Carrier or Tempest. Actually, getting a Mothership, though, is Alchemy. That actually could be enough to turn the tide. Uh, is there any detection at all for Death Gear? No, no detection for Death Gear. It seems like a problem. Seems like a problem. So, wow, he had a lot of Tempest. What is he making these? Six Tempest for Alchemy. Big number. Big, big number. Wow, again, charge lot into this army. You're going to take some stuff down, but for the most part, you're just going to die. Guardian Shield doesn't help against melee attacks. Pro tip from Falcon Paladin, which the Zealots are. Are they actually... Whoa, the Zealots won that ground battle. Are you kidding? 
Alchemy Zealots won the ground battle. The Voidriders couldn't kill them fast enough to protect his stuff. That's kind of amazing. Okay, well, it wasn't the greatest thing of all time, but it wasn't terrible either. And the thing with Tempest is Void Rays do bonus damage versus them with their Prismatic Alignment ability. Okay, some Stalkers, good. Alchemy, keep that Stalker coming. He's got plus two attack and plus two armor, which is really, really good. Upgrade stuff. Looks like we got plus one, plus one, plus one for the air units of Death Gear. Death Gear's not making anything but Void Rays. He's kind of fallen into the trap that Void Rays are the only thing that will save him. But um, I don't, I don't think that's a guarantee. I'm gonna go with not a guarantee, as a matter of fact. Ah, some Dark Templar here too. He recognizes the importance. Well, I guess these cannons are detectors, though. Yeah, I guess there's detection of cannons. I was looking for observers, but uh, this is a lot of detection that Death Gear's running with. So this cloak, I don't know, is gonna be really all that important, really all that useful for alchemy in the upcoming attack. Does he still not know? He knows about this, right? Yes, because he flew over it and killed some of those probes. It's 58 to 55 harvesters. Death Gear has actually kept up in worker count here. Sure, it's the 15 minute mark and he's only got 50 workers, but alchemy only has 58 and you only, only have to be better than the player that you're playing against, right? To win. And that's kind of what he's working on. Three carriers in production for Death Gear. The Tempests are going to be real good here. All right, here is the battle. Ladies and gentlemen, Void Ray is using prismatic alignment on all of the things. And I just, is there a two, the Phoenix doing a lot of work here. And that is actually a win. That is a super win for Alchemy's army. The carriers are going to come out and maybe be able to turn the tide. But actually, no, several people are still alive. Six of them here. Actually, the Immortals crushing the buildings, as was foretold. Stalker trying to come in and get some, do some, do some stuff from Death Gear, but nope. Not allowed. Gonna take down shield battery. Gonna get rid of cannons. I mean, Archon here might die to the cannons just because there are so many of them. But again, I think a big problem for Death Gear is he invested so much in cannons, which gradually lose their effectiveness over time as upgrades do apply to these army units and upgrades do not apply to the cannons. Defensive DTs from Death Gear? What? Where's your observer? Do you have one? I feel like you had one at some point. Had one, but dead now, it seems. All right, so Death Gear actually kind of holding on with some last second, last ditch Dark Templar. Can't do anything about the Tempest though, or the Void Rays. Uh, where did the carriers go? They're back here making interceptors. All right. All right, so Skytoss army of alchemy, pretty good against the DTs of Death Gear. And I really, really think the Tempest, with their plus two attack especially, are just going to tear those carriers apart. I don't, I don't see this happening for the Death Gear. I mean, he keeps losing probes. They're running down here a long distance mine from the natural base and just getting destroyed by Tempest, which is kind of overkill because they do a full um, 48 damage per shot. And here we go. Oh, Archon's up for Death Gear. What? Okay, he's focusing down the carriers actually pretty well here. We're going to be honest. Focusing them down very well. The Archon's having a great time against the Tempest, though. Oh, wait. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Take down. Focus down the carrier. Don't worry about the Archons. Don't worry about the Interceptors, actually, is what's going on right now. They're getting absolutely flustered by the Interceptors. It's always fun to see Tempest flail around like that. Okay. So Archon's saving the day right there. Uh, one kill, two kills, zero kills. Carrier doing pretty well for himself, too, and a Dark Templar out. Looking pretty awesome. Holding his scythe. And with his big old feet. Permanently cloaked. Okay, another base. Warping in for alchemy. That's going to be... And another... He's double expanding right now. He's got about 1,400 and 1,000 minerals or 1,000 gas in the bank. Working on plus three ground weapons, plus three ground armor. And an engagement here of Stalker. A warping in Stalker. Oh, took down the war prison, but enough Stalkers are here. I think maybe... They can win against these Archons. Archons slowly getting whittled down here. Stalker's getting whittled down too. Again, just very distracted by the Interceptors. The Interceptors are MVPs of this match. If I had to say, somebody's the MVP of this match. Archon survives with 60 shield points, which is not a lot of shield points, but but enough to keep you alive. And Death Gear. People are going to say Death Charger, because uh, that's a card in Hearthstone, which I play sometimes. Anyway, Death Gear. Expanding to take a fourth base of his own. Doesn't bother to place his natural. It's pretty much mined out anyway. Understandable. I cannot believe this game is still going on. 
Alchemy has a ton of gateways that he's not made into warp gates, which seems like a major oversight. Death Gear continuing to make carriers. Alchemy continuing to make Tempest, which is fine as long as you can focus down the carriers. Is that allowed? I don't know. Seems like it's something that you should be able to do. Alchemy's got some Phoenix just kind of hanging out here above the Stargates of Death Gear. Which is funny. I don't know if they're planning on killing the carriers before they can get interceptors, which would probably work with the upgrades these guys have. Plus three. Eight damage per shot. Pretty fast weapon speed. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let us see what happens here. All right. I really think Alchemy needs to continue to make stuff. He still has a bit of a bank. He's making Tempest as fast as he can. He's making another mothership as fast as he can. He's getting plus one air armor and plus one shields. And okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Interceptors. Where did these guys come from? I don't know. Well, the Interceptors are getting taken out pretty well by these fully upgraded Phoenix until they decide to go after the carrier, in which case they die. Yeah, I think they're probably dead anyway. I don't think these... I can't select the Interceptors. It's so annoying. So darn annoying. But I guess you know what their upgrades are because they're right here. Plus two, plus two, plus one for Death Gear. Resources lost to this point in the game are 18,000 for Death Gear and 24,000. For alchemy, you know, cost efficiency again, just mass stalker, just mass stalker with the upgrades you already have. Alchemy, do it. What did you just make? What did you just make with all your money? I don't know. What I mean, did he warp him in somewhere else? Okay, bunch of stalkers. Good, bunch of stalkers. Got a mothership, got tempest. Okay, if you focus down the carriers with the tempest, you win this thing. You win it. I promise you do. This could be the final blow. I've been calling this for a while now, but Tempest just got a target. Just got a target correctly. This carrier right here. There are additional carriers inside the main base for Death Gear. A bit of a surprise, if I would say, but all can be expanding fairly well. I mean, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six bases at 21 minutes for an Into the Void game is pretty good. Pretty good. Definitely a lot of mistakes making, made. A lot of mistakes been making. Void race finished off that carrier. Wow. Voiders going after Archons. It's just nothing does well against Archons here. Oh, DT. Did you not bring detection again? Oh, Alchemy. No. The Dark Templar are wrecking your ground army again. Did you not know they were there the first time? Uh, this fourth base of death here is going to die. But the DTs are going to finish off everything. Except they can't see the things because they lost their detection too. Oh, this is weird. This is really, really weird. And that's it. Death Gear taps out. He recognizes all he's got left is a handful of Dark Templar. Four of them and two carriers. And it decides to leave the game without saying GG, but I don't know. Maybe he doesn't know any better. Perhaps he does not know any better. Well, okay, so that was excellent target firing, killing those carriers that time by Alchemy. Didn't bring detection after losing most of his ground armor to DTs the first time around. Well, like the last time, the last attack, I guess. But I guess you didn't need him. Where were they? Oh, that's units lost. He didn't have any. No, he did. Where is it? That's back here. Defending. Defending the homeland. All right, man. That's cool. Whew, resources lost in this game. 22,000 for Death Gear compared to 25,000 for Alchemy. And yeah, it was just Alchemy's macro. Number of bases that he had compared to what Death Gear was working with. And then making Tempest before Death Gear started making carriers. I don't know if these are friends. And Alchemy knows that Death Gear always makes carriers and just made these preemptively. But they were the perfect answer to the carriers that Death Gear kept making. Stalkers do pretty good against the uh, air units. And... Yeah, that's about it. So, that's going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Into the Void. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.
to the void. 